Think about it. How often do we hold ourselves back? Because we believe we're not there yet. I'm not ready. We say, I haven't done enough, learned enough, become enough. And in doing so, we trap ourselves in this endless cycle of self-doubt, always believing that success is something for tomorrow, for the future version of ourselves, not for the person we are today. But this kind of thinking blinds us. It clouds our vision, making it hard to see the truth. The truth of victory doesn't come from waiting until you feel like you deserve it. It comes from acting as though you've already won, even when the world hasn't caught up yet. You see, the problem with constantly chasing success as if it's somewhere out there is that it keeps you stuck. It keeps you from recognizing the strength, the potential, and the opportunities that are already within you and around you. And what's worse is that it keeps you small. It convinces you that your worth is tied to some future version of yourself rather than the person standing here right now. So let me ask you, if we understood that, if we truly embrace the idea that winning is a way of thinking and living, not just a result. Imagine waking up each morning with that mindset. Imagine stepping into your day, not with hesitation or fear, but with the quiet confidence of someone who knows deep in their bones that they've already succeeded. How would that change the choices you make? Would you still hold back from speaking up in that meeting because you're afraid of being wrong? Would you still put off starting that new project because you're worried you might fail? Or would you instead take action from a place of assurance, knowing that whether or not things go perfectly, you're already on solid ground? Living as though you've already won doesn't mean pretending life is perfect. It doesn't mean ignoring your struggles or denying the challenges in front of you. It means acknowledging those things but not letting them define you. It means showing up to each moment as the version of yourself who is capable of overcoming those challenges, rather than the version who is still waiting for permission to start. We often talk about self-doubt, as though it's a fact of life, something we just have to accept. But I'll ask you, like, what if self-doubt is less about who we are and more about how we've been taught to think? What if it's not something you have to live with forever, but something you can choose to let go of by shifting your mindset when we live as though we're still fighting for a win, we make choices out of fear, fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of not being enough. But when we live as though we've already won, that fear begins to lose its grip. Think about the people who inspire you, the ones who seem to navigate life with a sense of purpose and ease. They're not waiting for success to find them. They're moving through life with the confidence of someone who already believes they belong, who already sees themselves as successful regardless of what the world says. They're not fearless, but they act in spite of their fears because they know that the real victory is in showing up fully, not in achieving some flawless outcome. So what if we stopped waiting for the world to tell us we've won and started living like it's already true? What would that look like for you? Maybe it's taking that step you've been putting off, making that phone call, starting that conversation, launching that idea. Maybe it's simply shifting the way you see yourself, recognizing that you have everything you need within you right now, not someday down the road. If we understood this, if we lived from this place of inner victory, what would change in our lives? I believe the answer is everything because when you start to see yourself as someone who has already succeeded, the way you move through the world changes. The decisions you make, the risks you're willing to take, the way you interact with others, it all begins to shift. What does it mean to win? It's such a simple question on the surface, but when we really start to pull it apart, it gets complicated, doesn't it? Who decides what winning looks like? Is it about being the wealthiest person in the room? The most famous? The one with the highest title? Or the most followers online? These are the images that the world so often shows us. The shiny pictures of success we're fed from the time we're young. You know, the ones, and the idea that if you're not constantly achieving more, earning more, doing more, then somehow you've fallen short. And it's easy to buy into that, to get swept up in the idea that winning is all about stacking up accomplishments like trophies on a shelf. But here's the thing. If that's all it is, why are so many people who seem to have it all still unsatisfied? If wealth, fame, and power were all it took to win in life, then why do we see people at the top of their fields, 
still searching for meaning, still chasing something that seems just out of reach. You hear stories of the CEO who can't sleep at night or the celebrity who's surrounded by people but feels utterly alone. We see it all the time. People have everything the world says defines success, yet they're still looking for more. Why is that? It's because those things, while they might make life more comfortable or give us a sense of accomplishment, aren't the real markers of victory. Winning is not about what you have in your bank account, the size of your house or the accolades you've... It's about something much deeper. Let me share a different perspective with you. Victory is a state of being. It's not something you can buy, earn, or get handed to you. It's not a moment in time where you cross the finish line and suddenly everything falls into place forever. No, real victory is a way of living. It's a condition of your heart and your mind, something that you carry with you every single day, whether the world sees it or not. Think about that for a moment. If winning isn't tied to what you achieve, but to how you live, how does that change the way you think about success? Suddenly, it's not about waiting for that big moment where everything clicks. It's about how you choose to show up in your life right here, right now. Let me give you an example. Have you ever met someone who doesn't have much in the way of material success, but still seems completely at peace with their life? Someone who, despite challenges or setbacks, carries themselves with quiet confidence, resilience, and content. Maybe they're not famous. Maybe they're not rich. But when you look at them, you can tell they found something deeper. That's victory. That's what winning looks like when it's not defined by the world's standards, but by something more lasting. I remember a man I once met, a small business owner. From the outside, his life might have seemed unremarkable. He wasn't someone the world would call rich or powerful. But let me tell you, he was one of the most content people I've ever known. He didn't measure his success by how much money he made or by the size of his business. He measured it by the relationships he built, by the trust he earned from his community, and by the peace he felt knowing he was doing something he loved, something that aligned with his values, he was happy. And here's the thing. No amount of external success could have given him that. It came from within. He wasn't chasing victory. He was living it every single day. On the other hand, I've known people with plenty of outward success who always seemed restless, never quite satisfied, even as they reached higher and higher. They were constantly striving, but no achievement ever felt like enough. It was as if they were stuck on a treadmill, always running, but never arriving. This is what I want us to reflect on today. Winning, real winning, is not about the applause or the accolades. It's not about hitting some magical milestone. It's about how you carry yourself through life. It's about how you handle the ups and the downs. It's about whether you can find peace. Not when everything is perfect, but in the middle of life's messiness. So victory is something you can experience every day, no matter what your circumstances are. The question becomes, how do we step into it? How do we start living as if we've already won? Well, for starters, it means letting go of the idea that we're still waiting for success to come. It means realizing that we don't need the world's approval or even some grand achievement to feel like we've made it. It means recognizing that the power to define victory lies with us, not with anyone else. It's about shifting our focus from what we don't have to what we already possess. The strength, the resilience, the relationships, the ability to grow and learn. And it's about taking small steps each day with the knowledge that no matter what happens, you're already on solid ground. One practical way to start living like this is to redefine what success looks like in your daily life. Instead of measuring your worth by whether you've hit some big milestone, measure it by how you handled today. Did you approach your work with integrity? Did you show kindness to someone who needed it? Did you stay true to your values even when it wasn't easy? That's winning. That's the kind of success that can't be taken away from you no matter what else is going on in your life. Another key to stepping into this mindset is to stop comparing yourself to others. Comparison is one of the quickest ways to rob yourself of the joy that comes from living in a state of victory. There will always be someone who seems to have more, do more, or achieve more. But remember, their victory is not your victory. Your path is your own. And the moment you stop looking over at someone else's lane is the moment you start to truly appreciate the value of your own. 
So as we sit here today, I want to challenge you to think differently about what it means to win. Winning isn't something that happens out there in some distant future when all the stars align. It's something you can claim right now by changing the way you think, by changing the way you live. You don't have to wait for some magical moment. Victory is already yours if you choose to step into it. So how will you live differently? Now that you know this, how will you start to show up in your own life knowing that the power to define your success, your victory is already in your hands? How many of us live with the belief that victory is always just around the corner? We think, once I achieve that promotion, once I finish this degree, once I pay off this debt, then I've made it. Then I can relax, then I can be happy, then I'll be successful. We create this story in our minds that the future is where all the good things are, where the real wins lie, and we end up spending so much time living for tomorrow that we forget something incredibly important today. What if you didn't wait for success, but lived as though it were already yours? Think about that. What would change in your life if you stopped putting victory off until some future date? If instead of believing that happiness, peace, and fulfillment were tied to a distant achievement, you embraced the idea that those things are available to you right now. Far too often, we look ahead thinking that our victory is somewhere down the line, and in doing so, we miss what's right in front of us. We overlook the beauty, the opportunities, and the growth happening in this moment because we're too busy chasing what we believe we still need to gain. But what if, instead of constantly chasing, we started claiming? What if we stopped waiting for life to get better and instead chose to act as if the victory was already ours? There's a danger in always looking ahead. The more we focus on the future, the more disconnected we become from the present. We begin to treat today as merely a stepping stone to tomorrow, forgetting that today is our life. And the problem with this way of thinking is that it keeps pushing happiness and fulfillment further away, always tied to some future moment, always just out of reach. But the truth is the present moment is all we really have. Right now is where life happens. Right now is where we make decisions, where we take action, where we build relationships, where we create meaning. And when we live with the belief that victory is already ours, it changes how we show up in the present. Instead of waiting for some future success to give us permission to feel accomplished or worthy, we start making choices today that reflect our belief in our own capability. Let's take a look at how this works. When you live as if you've already won, your actions change. You stop making decisions from a place of lack, fear, or insecurity, and you start making them from a place of confidence and abundance. You're not constantly second-guessing yourself or holding back because you think you're not ready. You act with the assurance that you already have what it takes, that the victory you seek is not something you need to chase. It's something you carry within you. Imagine walking into a meeting or starting a project with the mindset that you've already won. How would that shift the way you approach your work? Instead of worrying about whether you're good enough or whether people will approve of you, you move forward with clarity and purpose. Instead of doubting every step, you trust your instincts and take bold actions because you believe in the strength you already possess. This mindset changes not just how you feel, but how you perform. It frees you from the anxiety of striving and allows you to focus on what really matters. Doing your best, being present, and embracing the opportunities that are right in front of you. When you start living as if you've already won, the future you were so worried about starts to take care of itself. By focusing on today, by making the most of the present moment, you naturally create a better future. Success flows from the decisions and actions you take right now, not from endlessly worrying about what's to come. But this shift in mindset isn't always easy, is it? So many of us have been conditioned to think that we have to wait. Wait until we've reached a certain milestone. Wait until we've earned the right to, to feel successful. But the truth is, the only thing standing between you and that sense of victory is your belief that it's still somewhere far off. The moment you decide to claim it, the moment you start living with the understanding that you are already capable, already enough, it's not about pretending that life is perfect or that there aren't challenges. There will always be struggles, always things we're working towards, but living in the present with the mindset that victory is already yours, 
gives you the resilience and the strength to face those challenges without losing your sense of self-worth. You stop seeing obstacles as evidence that you're not there yet and instead see them as opportunities to grow and prove to yourself just how capable you are. So what's holding us back from stepping into this mindset, what keeps us from living is that we've already won from embracing the present with all the confidence and joy that comes with it. Is it fear? Is it doubt? Or maybe it's the stories we've been told about what success is supposed to look like. The world will always have its own ideas about what winning looks like. It will always tell you that you need to have more, be more, do more before you can claim success. But real victory isn't about meeting the world's expectations. It's about living each day in alignment with who you are, with your values, and with the knowledge that you already have everything you need to succeed. So how will you start living in the present with the mindset that you've already won? How will you embrace today, not as a stepping stone to some future goal, but as a meaningful, valuable part of your life right now? This is the power of living in the present. It gives you the freedom to stop waiting, to stop chasing, and to start fully living. And as we explore this question, we come to a deeper one. If we have the power to live like this, why don't we? What holds us back from stepping into this mindset, from claiming the victory that's already within our grasp? Let's take a closer look at those barriers. Because once we understand them, we can finally break free. Why do we hesitate to act like we've already won? What is it that holds us back from stepping fully into that mindset? from embracing life with the confidence of someone who already knows the victory is theirs, I believe at the heart of it, the answer is fear. Fear and its constant companion, self-doubt. These two are often our greatest enemies, more powerful than any external obstacle we might face. They whisper to us in moments of decision, in moments when we are on the verge of stepping into something bigger. What if I fail? They ask, what if I'm not good enough? What will people think of me? These questions may sound familiar because they are the quiet, insidious voices that live in the minds of so many of us. They keep us small, keep us from fully embracing our potential. And here's the irony, these fears are rarely rooted in reality. More often than not, they are illusions constructed by our own minds, fueled by uncertainty and the need for control, but they feel so real, don't they? That's the power of fear. It convinces us that we are not yet ready, that we must wait, that we must hold back, because if we don't, something terrible will happen. Let's break this down for a moment. Why do we fear acting as if we've already won? Is it the fear of failure? Failure is one of those things that we are taught to avoid at all cost. We're told that failing means we weren't good enough, that we didn't try hard enough, that we should have done something differently. But here's the truth. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of the process. Everyone who has ever achieved anything of real value has failed at some point. And not just once, many, many times. Failure isn't a sign that you're losing. It's a sign that you're learning, that you're growing, that you're taking risks and moving forward. So if failure is inevitable and even necessary, why do we fear it so much? I think it's because we've been conditioned to believe that our worth is tied to our success. We fear that if we fail, it's not just the project or the goal that fa we internalize failure as something personal, something that says we are not enough, but that's a lie. Failing at something doesn't make you a failure. It makes you human. It means you had the courage to try, the courage to step into the unknown and give it your best shot. And that in itself is a victory. But then there's the fear of judgment. What will people think if I act like I've already won and then I fall short? What will they say if I walk with confidence and things don't go as planned? This fear of judgment can be paralyzing, can it? We worry about the opinions of others as if their approval or disapproval has the power to define our worth. But let me ask you this. Whose opinion matters most when it comes to your life? The people watching from the sidelines or you, the one actually living it. We can't control what others think of us. Some people will always have something to say no matter what you do. But the truth is, most people aren't thinking about you nearly as much as you imagine. They're busy dealing with their own fears, their own doubts. 
And even if they do judge you, so what? Their judgment doesn't change who you are. It doesn't take away your victories, your value, or your potential. When we stop worrying about the opinions of others, we free ourselves to live fully, to make bold decisions, and to act with the knowledge that we are already in. Now let's talk about the internal dialogue that often holds us back. How many of you have ever thought, I'm not ready yet, or I'm not enough? These are the phrases we use to keep ourselves from stepping into the life we truly want. We tell ourselves that we'll start once we feel more prepared, once we've gained more experience, once we've proven ourselves. But the truth is there's no magical moment where we suddenly become ready. Readiness comes from action, from doing the thing, even when we don't feel fully prepared. Think about it. When have you ever truly felt ready for a big challenge? Chances are you felt some doubt, some hesitation, but you did it anyway. And in doing it, you found your strength. You realized that you were more ready than you thought. Not because you had all the answers, but because you were willing to take the first step, willing to learn and grow along the way. And that's the key. Acting as if you've already won doesn't mean pretending that you have it all figured out. It means trusting that you have what it takes to figure it out, to learn, to adapt, to succeed, even in the face of uncertainty. It means recognizing that not enough is just a story we tell ourselves, not a fact. You are already enough right now with all your imperfections, with all your doubts, with all your fears. Let me share a story. There was a young woman I worked with who was incredibly talented but paralyzed by fear. She had a dream of starting her own business, but she kept telling herself she wasn't ready, that she needed more experience, more skills, more time. Every time she thought about taking the leap, the fear of failure would creep in. What if I fail? What if people laugh at me? What if I'm not cut out for this? These were the questions that played on a loop in her mind. But one day, after a particularly difficult week at her job, she made a decision. She decided that she was tired of letting fear run her life. She was tired of waiting for some imaginary moment when she would feel ready. So she took the leap. She started her business, not because the fear went away, but because she chose to act in spite of it. And guess what? She faced challenges. There were days when things didn't go as planned, days when she doubted herself, days when she wanted to quit, but she didn't. She kept going. And in doing so, she realized something incredible. The fear wasn't nearly as powerful as she imagined. It only had the power she gave it. That's what happens when we act from a place of victory. The fear and doubt that once seemed so overwhelming begin to lose their hold on us. They're still there, but they no longer control us. We realize that they are just illusions, smoke and mirrors meant to keep us from stepping into our full potential. And when we face them head on, when we take bold action despite them, they dissipate. So if fear and doubt are the true barriers to living as if we've already won, what happens when we face them? What happens when we stop letting them dictate our decisions and start living from a place of confidence and belief in our own worth? We begin to win. Not because we've suddenly become fearless, but because we've learned to act even when the fear is there. And that is where true victory lies. Not in the absence of fear, but in the willingness to move forward in the face of it. What does this mean for you? It means that when you embrace who you are, when you stop waiting for others to tell you that you're enough, you begin to live in a way that draws the right opportunities and relationships to you. You stop running after things that don't serve you and start attracting what's meant for you. This is the power of living authentically. It's not about trying to be someone you're not in order to gain approval or success. It's about trusting that who you are is enough, that your uniqueness is your greatest strength, and that living in alignment with your true self is the path to real victory. And when you live this way, you not only transform your own life, but you also inspire. So often, we fear failures if it's the end. We see it as this definitive moment that somehow proves our inadequacy. But let me offer a different perspective. What if failure isn't a verdict, but a teacher? What if the moments when things don't go as planned are actually the moments that equip us to become stronger, more capable, more in tune with what we truly want? When you act like you've already won, Failure doesn't have the same power over you. It no longer feels like a crushing defeat. 
Instead, it's a stepping stone, a part of the journey that we all must walk. It's the feedback that tells you what needs to change, what needs to be refined, but it doesn't think about it. How often have you learned your most important lessons not from success, but from failure? Isn't it in those moments when things didn't work out that you were forced to grow, to adapt, and to rethink your approach? I'm sure you can think of a time when something went wrong, and at the moment, it felt like the end of the world. But looking back, you realize that setback was a catalyst. It pushed you in a new direction, helped you see things differently, or simply taught you resilience. Take a moment to think about a time when you failed. What did you learn? How did it shape you? Did it really mean you were off track or was it guiding you towards something better? More often than not, we realize that the moments that felt like failure were really opportunities in disguise. They gave us clarity. They built our resilience and they strengthened our resolve. That's what happens when you view failure from a winning mindset. It transforms from something to fear into something to embrace. I remember reading about Thomas Edison, the man behind so many of the modern conveniences we now take for granted. When asked about the thousands of experiments he conducted before finally inventing the electric light bulb, he famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways it won't work. Think about that. Thousands of attempts, countless moments where he could have given up, thrown in the towel, and declared himself a failure. But he didn't see those missteps as failure. He saw them as part of the process, as necessary steps on the path to And isn't that the mindset we're talking about here? When you live like you've already won, you understand that failure is not final. It's not a dead end. It's a redirection. It's a lesson that sharpens you, teaches you, and prepares you for the next step. It's not a reflection of your worth or your ability. It's simply part of the process. Consider athletes, for example. They train for years, and every missed shot, every loss, every injury is a part of the process. They don't stop playing because they missed a goal. They understand that setbacks are part of growth, and each failure teaches them how to improve. The same applies to us, to our lives. We need to stop seeing failure as a sign that we're not good enough and start seeing it as part of the path to success. Now, I know this can sound easier said than done when we're in the middle of a setback. It's hard to keep perspective. It's hard not to feel like the world is crashing down. But I want you to remember this. Failure is temporary. It's not permanent. It's only final if you stop, if you give up. But when you act like you've already won, you realize that every failure is just a detour, not a dead end. Let me share with you the story of J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series. Before she became one of the world's best-selling authors, she faced rejection after rejection. Her manuscript was turned down by 12 publishers before one finally said, can you imagine what might have happened if she'd let those rejections define her? If she had seen them as proof that she wasn't good enough, that her work didn't matter. But she didn't. She kept going. She believed in her work in herself, even when the world didn't seem to agree. And because of that, she eventually succeeded that's what it means to act like you've already won. It's about pushing forward, even when it seems like the odds are against you. It's about understanding that setbacks are part of the process, not signs that you should stop. When you live from a mindset of victory, you're not easily shaken by failure because you know that failure is never the end. It's just a step along the way. Now let's talk about how we can adopt this mindset in our own lives. How do we move from fearing, fearing failure to embracing it? It starts with a shift in perspective. The next time you face a setback, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Ask, what is this trying to teach me? Instead of seeing failure as a reflection of your worth, see it as feedback, feedback that helps you adjust, pivot, and grow. Every successful person, every leader, every individual who has accomplished something worthwhile has faced failure. But what sets them apart is that they didn't let failure stop them. They didn't allow it to define their path. They kept moving, kept believing that victory was still theirs to claim. And that's what you have to do. When you act like you've already won, failure becomes just another part of the story, not the end of the story. Imagine how much more resilient we could be if we saw failure as a lesson, not a defeat. How much more willing would we be to take risks? to step outside of our comfort zones, 
if we knew that failure wasn't something to fear? What would our lives look like if we didn't let setbacks keep us from pursuing what we really want? This is the power of living, like you've already won. It's not about avoiding failure. It's about embracing it as part of the journey. It's about recognizing that every misstep, every rejection, every obstacle is shaping you, teaching you, and preparing you for the next step. So the next time you face a setback, remember this. You haven't lost. You're still on the path to victory. You're still moving forward, still growing, still learning. And that is what truly defines success. Now imagine what happens when we embrace this mindset, not just in some parts of our lives, but in every aspect. Imagine the confidence we would carry, the resilience we would build, and the impact we could have on the world around us. So we've arrived at the same place where we began. Let's circle back to that first question. What would your life look like if you lived as if you'd already won? Take a moment to reflect on that. Picture yourself, not waiting for some distant success, not putting off the best version of your life until later, but living it right now, as if you've already achieved everything you desire. How different would your day-to-day -day look? What choices would you make? How would you approach your relationships, your work, your passions? Here's what we talked about. Victory is not a moment, not a finish line you cross someday. It's a mindset. It's a way of moving through life, carrying a deep assurance that you already have within you everything you need to succeed. It's not about waiting for external validation or some grand recognition of your worth. It's about living with the quiet confidence that you are enough right now exactly as you are. Think about the confidence that comes from action. We don't sit around waiting for the perfect moment because we know it will never come. Confidence is built when we move forward, even when we're uncertain. It's those small steps taken in faith. Those moments when we trust ourselves enough to act, that compound over time and grow into unshakable confidence. And what about the setbacks? We've all faced them. We all know what it's like to stumble, to feel like we've fallen short. But here's the thing. Setbacks are not the end of the road. They're not signs that you've lost or that you're off track. They are part of the process, part of the learning. Failure, when viewed through the lens of victory, becomes a teacher, not a verdict. It becomes something that refines you, strengthens you, and prepares you for what's next. But perhaps one of the most transformative aspects of living like you've already won is the freedom it gives you to live authentically. No longer are you chasing someone else's version of success. No longer are you waiting for others to affirm your worth. You can stand tall in who you are, knowing that your value doesn't come from external validation, but from within. And when you live authentically, you give others permission to do the same. You become a source of inspiration, a beacon of what's possible. I want you to really think about this. What would change in your life starting today if you acted like the person who has already achieved everything they desire? How would you approach each moment? Would you hold yourself back, waiting for more experience or more approval? Or would you step forward boldly, trusting in your own ability? What would shift in the way you talk to yourself? in the way you make decisions, in the way you interact with others. I'm not asking you to imagine a life free of challenges because that's not realistic, but I'm asking you to consider how you would face those challenges with a mindset of victory, with the quiet assurance that you are capable, that you are worthy, that you've already won the battle within. You know, this mindset is not something reserved for the future. It's not something that's dependent on reaching a specific goal, or achieving some external marker of success. It's something you can embody right now. It's a choice you can make today, in this very moment. You don't need permission from anyone else. You don't need to wait for some perfect circumstance. You can decide right here and right now to live as if you've already won. And as we close, I wanna leave you with one final thought. One more question to take with you as you leave here today. What if the real victory is not in the outcome, but in living each day with the courage, confidence, and conviction of someone who already knows? What if the real success isn't tied to the end result at all, but in how you show up, how you carry yourself, how you live your life each and every day? When you live like you've already won, you're no longer striving for some distant prize. You're no longer waiting for the world to tell you you're enough. 
Instead, you're embracing the fullness of who you are, acting with confidence and boldness, trusting in your own worth. And that's the ultimate reward. It's not a medal, not a trophy, not a title. It's the peace that comes from knowing that you've lived your life fully, courageously, and authentically.